So I've got to ask, I know you grew up in Stockbridge and your parents had a restaurant there. You grew up in St. Louis. How did you get into the food business? I mean, I think it just got into me. Like, when people ask me that, they're like, how did you, how did you choose the restaurant business? I said, you don't, it chooses you. Like, if you're not, if your family's not in it, it's just kind of something that you fall into. Like, I started watching, you know, Emeril Lagasse when I was like six years old on TV. And like, when I could get my first job at 14, I could legally work. I went to my first restaurant, started working there. I just never really looked back, you know, and my mom was always cooking at home, so I was always with her and was coming up with my own recipes, even at like 10 years old, like making crab cakes and just having fun with it. And then, yeah, I just never looked back. I've been in it ever since. So Ron, with you, you grew up with it. I mean, that's the family business, but you ventured out in the sense that you didn't stay in a Chinese cuisine. Why? Um, you know, I think I grew up in a multicultural environment, being being raised with, you know, parents that were immigrants. Um, and growing up in Stockbridge, Georgia, your, your neck of the woods, you know, you were like, why do I look different than everyone else? And, you know, and you just get different influences. And so I think that kind of came out in my in my craft as well. Um, you know, I, I, I was always taught to do things that make you uncomfortable. So instead of going and reinforcing Chinese food or, or another, or, or Southern food, I wanted to really learn French food. And it was kind of, Aaron, same thing like Aaron, um, watching Emeril Lagasse, I looked at a lot of restaurant magazines growing up and TV and I'm like, man, this food looks so different than a bowl of fried rice. And I'd be like, why? And a lot of my research would lead to, um, European cooking or Japanese or whatever. So, you know, it was it was always that challenge of can I can I learn this different style of cooking and 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 so I, yeah. So I, I went and looked into other types of cuisines. So I, I got to know, guys, when you cook at home or do you cook at home? Uh -oh. What do you cook? Oh no. Oh no, what? <laughs> I know that I know that lies sitting at home. <laughs> At some point, I'm watching this and hands in the air. I, I don't cook at home much these days, to be honest. Not, not too much these days. But you know, when we cook, it's like the equivalent of like a non-professional cooking. Really? Five to ten times, right? I would say. I mean, yeah, you know, I know I can produce a meal much faster than my wife can. And, you know, not to talk, talk to her. Can I, can I curse? <laughs> yeah. You are, go for my, food, yeah. my food is probably a little bit better. Um, so I, I, you know, I think we, we, you get more bang out of the buck with us if we cook. <laughs> I'll, t I'll um, tell you what. But you I'll, know, if he's at home cooking, he's not bringing home the bacon, right? Yeah. Well, so. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm known to do something here and there, but on the, on here the and there, on the regular day to day, like, you know, not, not too much. I kind of keep it at work. You know, when you're, when you're surrounded by food all the time, and your, your life is revolved, it revolves around food and cooking for people. It, sometimes you just need a break from cooking at home, right? Um, I mean, and so it's hard. Like I'm giving out applesauce yeah. packages. We got because <laughs> yeah. you got three we kids. Got, we got dry kids. cereal yeah. on the line. We're making ham and cheese yeah. sandwiches, and, cutting yeah. the crust. And, like you know, my daughter does not want a, a foie gras ravioli with truffle emulsion. She wants a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's right. So, but you know, you know around Christmas time, Hanukkah, we might get a big old prime rib going. You know, that might yeah, happen here yeah, and there. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> How can you eat out at other people's restaurants? Oh, I love having people cook for me. I don't. Yeah. I love cooking for for other people, but I don't mind being cooked for as well. And you know, you're not for, judgmental. I'm very judgmental, but it doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. Right? Ah. I, take, like, I take the chef hat off when I yeah. go out. I go out for a good time, and you know, I want to, you know, experience, you know, what other people, you know, are doing, and try to learn and keep a you know keep an open mind i don't go out looking for looking for mistakes i go out looking to ha enjoy myself so yeah i think it's like a two-edged sword because be being in the restaurant industry and knowing how food is made you can be a little more hypercritical but you can also appreciate it more right you're like oh man look at how this this pasta was made this took an extra four hours to make so you may you may end up appreciating the efforts more um so it's a double-edged sword. It's like, oh yeah, you love it, but then you're also like, why can't I get my water? It's the third time. I don't know. You know, I know she's not that busy. My servers can handle six tables while she's only got four tables. Like, 
But at the end of the day, it's, you know, you still like it.